All right. Uh, when Oklahoma came to the SEC, a lot of people said, you got to get Eddie Radosevich on. And I was like, I've seen him on Twitter. And they say he's a really good guest. You need to get him on Talk Oklahoma. Uh, we're just now getting around to that. So that is on me, Eddie. But a ton of pressure here on your first appearance. How are you today? Well, now I'm really nervous. But uh, thank you. Uh, I, I think that people have been lying to you. I have nothing to offer. But it is a uh, it is a joy to join you guys today. Are you in our merch closet? <laughs> <laughs> somewhat. Somewhat. Yeah, usually we have everything else on. But I'm just a talent guy. I, I don't know how to turn anything on. So you got me yeah. on the uh, the computer. You dress so, like my uh, co-host. Are you, are you, yeah. Well, I mean, are, are, are you, Eddie's going to the links. I, I've learned one thing. If I'm going to hang out with uh, the SEC brethren, I at least have to uh, represent one of the finest institutions in the world in Augusta National. So uh, <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, we might get out to the course today. I know we're under an excessive heat warning here in Oklahoma, which is uh, not great for the afternoon golf session. So I might have to wait until the sun goes down. But uh, still, nonetheless, oh, I can't believe these guys start football practice on Wednesday. Ooh, it's actually that's brutal. Hey, speaking brutal. of excessive heat, I, I don't think we talked about it several times all summer long. It doesn't seem like you guys at Oklahoma and the guys at Texas got the same schedule the first year coming into the SEC. <laughs> Theirs seems easy. Yours does not. From I think from a fan base standpoint of traveling and going to games, it's going to be a lot more fun than maybe going to Nashville and uh, you know Fayetteville and stuff like that. I, that's just kind of a hop, skip, jump away from uh, Oklahoma City. But at the same time, yeah, it's a tough schedule, and I think that uh, there is cautious optimism about what Oklahoma can do here going into Brent Venables' third season. But at the same time, you start working through that schedule, and there's four, five, six games that are kind of the quote unquote swing games that are going to be really interesting for Oklahoma here in the first year. You will not find a bigger proponent of Jackson Arnold than the man to my left. He loves him some Jackson Arnold, thinks he's going to be really good. And I, I don't disagree. But, Eddie, we, we, last week we did a little, you know, a little uh, thing where we looked at the Dylan Gabriel numbers from last year and said, would Jackson Arnold be better or worse? It's hard to make a case he's better than any of Dylan Gabriel's numbers. Yeah, I think that it's a situation and, you know, there's going to be a lot of uh, people outside of the Oklahoma bubble that don't exactly understand how could you let Dylan Gabriel basically kind of walk uh, to Eugene. But at the same time, I think that there was a basic understanding that this is Jackson Arnold's program. And I think uh, the ceiling of what Jackson Arnold can be or will be one day uh, is probably much higher than what Dylan Gabriel was going to be. But when you're talking about this next season in 2024, you're going to have to kind of suffer some ups and downs. I think anytime that you throw a sophomore quarterback out there or a guy that's only started one game, uh, you know, he's going to turn the ball over. Obviously, uh, Oklahoma fans hope it's not the uh, six times like he did in the uh, the first start there at the Alamo Bowl against Arizona. But at the same time, I think that, you know, when you start talking about – and Oklahoma fans have been so just – stinking i think spoiled with quarterback play uh whether it be you know baker or even going all the way back to sam bradford landry jones uh kyler and then jalen it, it's been kind of interesting and i think that there is uh, some general thought that he can be that next great oklahoma quarterback it might just take a little bit of time and i think that's where you look at the defensive side of the ball and there's a lot of people that all of a sudden want to talk about the defensive side of the ball in norman when uh, you go back 2017, 2018, 2019, that simply wasn't the case. So uh, there's a lot of pressure going to be put on those guys if, uh, you know, Jackson does turn the ball over. But at the same time, I think that there's a lot of excitement about uh, the start of the Jackson Arnold era here in Norman. You know, after that six and seven year one, there was a lot of pressure on Venables to at least show that he wasn't <laughs> overwhelmed with that job. And Eddie bouncing back with 10 wins, I thought he did a great job with it. But, you know, based on the numbers from Gabriel to what you'll get with Jackson Arnold, I think much so the same going back to how difficult the schedule is. I would assume if Oklahoma won seven or eight games of the first year starting quarterback, just entering the SEC, the approval would be okay on that? I think that there will probably be people that are still a little bit unhappy. I I, I, do, I certainly don't think that uh, there are people around here that think Oklahoma is going to just walk into the SEC and also go 12-0. and 0. Uh, Now, there is a certain segment of the fan base that thinks that's going to be the case, but they're also probably the same people that are going to call for uh, you know Seth Luttrell one quarter into uh, offensive football against Temple in the opener. Uh, at the same time, I mean – if you were to tell people that they were going to go eight and four around here, I think that it would be met with a little bit of pushback. They think that, you know, nine and three, I think is kind of the, the pinnacle of what a lot of Oklahoma fans think that this thing could be. But at the same time, 
you better rack up wins in the uh, you know first part of September, and then obviously uh, going into the SEC schedule and opening two and zero against Tennessee and Auburn. So eight and four would be good. I think obviously nine three would be a, a fantastic start to uh, this first season in uh, the SEC. But I think, like you guys said, there's a lot of unknown with the schedule and kind of uh, what's to come with the uh, the unknown that is the week to week battle and the grind of the SEC. With your finger on the pulse of everything, Oklahoma, you tell me the fans for the schedule this year. What one SEC road trip are they most looking forward to? And then in the future, the stadium they're looking uh, most for, or the trip they're looking most forward to in the Southeastern Conference. Yeah, I think that, uh, you know, this year it would probably end up being uh, the Grove. I think anybody that has heard the uh, the legend of what the Grove is down in Oxford uh, certainly would match up with uh, kind of what Oklahoma fans envision of the SEC. Uh, at the same time, I think that there's a lot of people that are pretty excited about going to Baton Rouge. I know that you talk to Oklahoma fans in the way that they have uh, told it, it's kind of become a like an urban legend among OU fans, the way the uh, the OU LSU uh, Sugar Bowl went in 2003 and the way that they were treated on Bourbon Street. I know that uh, there was a lot of uh, uh, liquids being thrown at them, at the, but, you know, a certain element of uh, kind of the fun that comes with uh, Bourbon Street. But those are probably the two this year that really stick out to people. I know that they went to, uh, you know, there's a lot of Oklahoma fans that went to Knoxville in 2015. There's a lot of people uh, that went back to, you know, Tuscaloosa all the way going back into, oh, I guess that would have been 2002. Uh, at the same time, I think that, you know, I've never been to uh, Athens, Georgia. I look forward to uh, getting Georgia on the schedule at some point. And, uh, you know, I, Alabama is certainly one of those places that, uh, you know, if you're a college football fan, you would love to go watch a game at. So, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of excitement. I, I think you could probably pull the Oklahoma fans, and there's probably more places that they're excited to be than, uh, you know, somewhere like in Nashville where you're probably just going for uh, Broadway and the affairs that come before and after again. Yeah. Against so, so I, I was going to say, though, but the Big 12, I, I look at those road games in your old conference, and they just don't seem like fun places to go watch games. <laughs> I mean, I think that there was a certain, like, there is a certain, I guess, battle that I'm having to go through. Uh, I enjoyed some of the Big 12 stops, but they were places that I, we always went. And I think it was more of a, you know, kind of catching up with people that you hadn't seen in a year or so uh, when you were going on the odd even schedule. And, uh, you know, the OU Texas rivalry is so distinct because you, we never go down to Austin for football. It's always down in Dallas. Uh, but, you know, at the same time, I think that, you know, there is a certain level of excitement that comes with, uh, going to some some new places and seeing, you know, some fan bases that I think Oklahoma fans feel like uh, certainly match up their level of passion and, uh, you know, things like that nature that, uh, you know, kind of revolve around uh, college athletics like they do here in Norman. Eddie, I'm going to ask you a question Oklahoma fans thought they would never be asked. How much okay. will Drake Stoops be missed this year? <laughs> <laughs> I, I think he's going to be missed, but at the same time, uh, you know, I think that they do have a – and this isn't a knock on Dre because he was a fantastic receiver and, you know, somebody that, you know, I think when he walked on from Norman North High School, they never thought that they were, he would go and be the type of guy that he turned into over the last two seasons. Uh, but at the same time, you go out and you get Deion Burks from Purdue. He's going to be a guy that I think, uh, you know, will be one of Jackson Arnold's best friends. You saw it a little bit in the spring game. You saw the production that he was able to put together for Purdue over the last couple seasons. And uh, I think that that kind of transition is going to be uh, you know, pretty positive, pretty comfortable, pretty seamless. Uh, but at the same time, Drake was just one of those guys that, uh, you know, not to sound just so cliche because I hate it, but he was a coach's kid, showed up early, you know, stayed late, all that kind of stuff. Really good player. Uh, but at the same time, it's going to be really interesting to see what Oklahoma's wide receiver unit does. I think that there's a, a certain level of optimism that that group can be really good. It's going to come down to uh, kind of what that offensive line's put together and what they're going to be about having to uh, replace a number of guys from last season. And if they had some of the guys that they you know were coming back, if you had a Tyler Guyton coming back, I think it would be uh, a lot more uh, positive about what this offense could be. But uh, if they're you know struggling and certainly out of the gates, uh, you know James Pierce coming to town on September 21. I think there's already people that have some nightmares about what they might do to some uh, tackles that are you know making their first start in uh, Tennessee, obviously, with a couple non-conference games under the belt. I see the EA Sports jersey behind you. We have 12 employees up here. Nobody is uh, giving it an A for gameplay or anything. I give it an A for all the the college fanfare, but the gameplay itself is like a D plus. What do you think of the game? It's really tough. It's really tough. It's not the, uh, you know, the 14 game. I remember where you could uh, basically just run up and down the – 
the field. It seems like passing is pretty tough, but I need to get on the sticks. We've been pretty busy around here putting some, uh, playing some golf and stuff. I think here uh, with uh, football actually getting started, I'm going to buckle down and get on the sticks uh, a couple times this afternoon and uh, try to figure this thing out. It's it's pretty damn tough, though. I can already tell Eddie's our kind of guy. I've been pretty busy playing a lot of golf. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's I like what it's for. This is what this time's for. I'm That's not going right. to touch the sticks again probably until January, so it's kind of tough. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you, brother. I like being busy playing a lot of golf. That's hey. what I enjoy doing. If you right. would do three commercials in this segment, you'd be our kind of guy right here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Eddie knows the game. I guarantee Eddie knows the game. Uh, all right. Uh, Soonerscoop.com is the On3 site. Uh, the franchise up in Oklahoma is the radio station. And you can follow Eddie on social media at Eddie underscore Rado, R-A-D-O, at Eddie underscore R-A-D-O. Uh, Eddie Radosevich covers the uh, Oklahoma Sooners and now the SEC. Thank you very much for the time, Eddie. Good talk to you. Absolutely. Anytime, guys. Looking forward to uh, you know whatever this is going to be. I know there's a lot of excitement in uh, you know the state of Oklahoma for what's to come for uh, OU athletics, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be fun. Yep. Appreciate yeah. it. Can't we're wait gl- to see it. Take care. Yeah, we're glad to have you. Yeah, Eddie on the Johnston RVCenter.com hotline.